morning church God is good Tuhan Yesus bagus sangat bagus I'm going to start the service by reading from book of Psalms Psalms chapter 20 okay. today is 20th of August and we're going to read from Psalms 20 may the Lord answer you in the day of your of trouble may the name of the god of jacob defend you may he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of zion may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt offerings selah may he grant grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purposes we will rejoice in your salvation And in the name of our God we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy hill, holy heaven. With the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the lord our god they have bowed down and fallen but we have risen and stand upright safe lord may the king answer us when we call amen may the lord bless the reading of his word as we prepare our hearts to worship the lord uh, the lord let's uh, pray this morning Father God, we thank you for this wonderful morning, for bringing us safely here. We thank you for a wonderful week that we have passed through. We thank you for all our lives. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord. We humble ourselves. We bow down before you. We ask of you to forgive us all our sins, cleanse us by the precious blood of Jesus. That Lord, we can stand upright before you, clothed in your righteousness. And we thank you for this privilege of being clothed in your righteousness and able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And the Lord, even as we worship, we want to thank you for healing. We thank you for miracles. <coughs> we thank you for wonderful work of your hand upon all our lives, each and every one of us. We commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. How many of us want to see miracles? Just worship the Lord and we will go to see miracles. Amen. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The grace that taught. my heart to fear and grace my fears really how precious thing that grace appeared the hour i first believed through many days toil sense ness i have already come this grace that brought me safe thus far the grace will lead me home the lord has promised His word, my hope, 
secure. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yes, when this heart and flesh shall fail and mortal life shall cease I shall possess within the will a life of joy and peace when we thousand years bright morning shines the sun we fell as days to sing God's praise and when we first began amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we can see, we can see clearly, O God, your goodness upon our lives, O God. And we are so grateful, we are so joyful, O God, this morning, that we're able to see your glory, O God, that we can see supernatural things, spiritual things, O God, that it happens to God way ahead before what we see in the natural. And that gives us confidence, oh God, in you, in your presence. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to sing this song. We are together again. And we're going to welcome one another. Amen. We are together again. Just praising the Lord We're together again In one accord Something good is going to happen Something good is in store We're together again Just praising the Lord Kita bertemu lagi Untuk muji Tuhan Kita bertemu lagi Dalam kasih Sesuatu sedang terjadi Untuk kebaikan kita Kita bertemu lagi Untuk muji Tuhan We are together again Welcome one another just praising the Lord, hallelujah We are together again In one accord Something good is going to happen Something good is in store We are together again Just praising the Lord We are together again Just Praising the Lord. 
God joy. I got joy. I got joy. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water flowing through my soul. I got joy. I got joy. I got my name written in the book of life. I got my name written in the book of life. I got my name written in the book of life. Hallelujah. This joy that I have. The world didn't give to me this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I got joy. I got joy. I got joy. Hallelujah. Living water flowing through my soul. I got joy. I got joy. Move around. I got my name written in the book of life. I got my name written in the book of life. I got my name written in the book of life. Hallelujah. This joy, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. This joy, this joy that I have. World well, didn't give it to me this joy that I have. World well, didn't give it to me this joy that I have. The world well, didn't give it to me. World well, didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. World well, didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Thank you, Lord. You got joy? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship you in spirit and in truth to God. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Worship you. The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sin The people sing The people sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the higher. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the higher. Generation 
rising up to take their place with selfless faith, with selfless faith. I see a new of the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your name up high you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your name up high for you are great, you the miracle so great, there is no one else like you. 
There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. One more time. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we leave your name up high, we deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we leave your name up high. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, there is no attitude of worship begin to lift up your hands and call the name Jesus Jesus. 
you, O God. Absolutely nothing, O God. We just rent ourselves to you. All our desires, all our wants, all our needs, all the days ahead that we are not sure of. We just need you, Jesus. And you will help us to see what's coming ahead with the supernatural eyes that you have given us a God with your word of God you will lead us and guide us and never to be troubled never to be concerned of God because you are in control you are God Almighty and you are here God and you are a friend and you speak to us a God Father every day every moment of God we thank you Lord for your holy presence Thank you for helping us, each and every one of us, oh God. You know us. We thank you for the breakthrough. We thank you for the miracle. We thank you for the healing, a complete healing upon the body that has sickness. We thank you for the miracle that's happening, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. Wonderful name of Jesus. We come in this time into your beautiful hand. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. God is good. Praise God. Welcome to the house of the Lord. And we see a lot of children. And I'm going to give you the announcement and pray for the offering, right? And we have a little bit of time. I'm going to share a testimony as well. So bear with me as you will see me a little bit longer here. <laughs> okay. Praise God. How many of you are blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Ada tangan tada nai, eh? Okay. Praise God. We made it. We want to thank you for Brother Samson. Uh, last Friday, uh, as planned, we had the cleaning okay I was thinking when I was driving back from work I was so exhausted and I just hit the bed <laughs> and I just slept off and then I got up and I text to Pastor Silas and say we will have the cleaning after the prayer meeting and I, somehow I just got up just for the prayer meeting at 9 p.m. p.m. and we joined the prayer meeting and Brother Samson text me uh, is spring cleaning on I said I'm on the way Actually, I just leaving the house. And I was hungry. I didn't have any food. And I just came to church and to do the cleaning. And guess what? Uh, Brother Samson, and I, when I was walking up the staircase, I was shocked. I felt very guilty because I saw so many uh, sleepers you know, uh, on the staircase. I said, my goodness, I'm late and so many people came. And then I was walking up, I saw a, a different scenario. I saw a, like a party <laughs> in upstairs in the children's church, okay? So I was, I, I, it was a surprise for me first. And I didn't know Brother Samson prepared a surprise uh, birthday party for Marisa. Okay, praise God. So there was a lot of food. So I had uh, my dinner nicely and enjoyed the birthday celebration. And then we did the cleaning joyfully. So last week, remember, I, I said that nicely sing and dance and do the work, you will not feel tired. And exactly what happened, and we did our work, we went back around 11 something, and we were all okay. Praise God for that. Huh? So thank you, Brother Samson. A very good surprise for your daughter, Marisa. Okay, praise God. Praise God. It was a good time. So we welcome you. Huh? Next time, spring cleaning, be ready. No, got a surprise on. Huh? <laughs> okay, that's for the short announcement. Pastor Silas is here already. So testimony will, will come another time, okay? I'll give the testimony. But if you, I think I'll make it summarize, a simple one. I want to encourage you because God loves you. God really, really loves you. And He don't want you to be in a very difficult situation. Believe me from your heart, Okay? Uh, two weeks ago on Friday, I had an experience. Uh, I changed my phone. got a new phone. Okay? And I went and changed my 
And as usual, they ask you to put in the password. Very confidently, I put in the password. And then, uh, forgot about it. Okay? Then my phone got some problem to link with my car system. Then I, I said, I just uh, switch off and on again the phone. And guess what? And that time I was, I was uh, after a futsal game, I was kind of injured. I was in quite deep pain. <laughs> and I was thinking, why am I doing this? What this thing, you know? Sometimes when bad things happen again and again, uh, that's the worst time. Uh. I was in pain and I was sitting in the car and then I uh, off and on the phone and asked for a password. And guess what? All the password I tried all failed. And that's Friday. 9 p.m. I'm leading the worship. I'm in the prayer meeting. And my password not working. I said, this is the worst thing. So I said, God, I don't know why this is happening. You said, in everything, give thanks. Okay, I'm giving thanks. I don't know what's happening. I'll just drive back home. It was quite late already. I was concerned my family will be looking for me. Okay, so I drove slowly. The car was thinking and just praying in my heart. Reached the house. I didn't reach the house. Went to Samsung first in Jasko. Tried to reset the password. They said they cannot help me. You have to go to the service center. They only service center me. You know lah. Everything will be uh, reboot lah. Your phone. It's a long process. I was like, God, what's going on? <laughs> and I just uh, sit quietly, went back home as if like nothing happened. I just joined the prayer meeting already been started that time at the, my dining area. I sat down with my family and praying. And the Spirit of God just uh, kind of like remember, recall me, go and take this, this green diary you have. And, uh, and then I opened, the, I, 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 rem- I kind of remember I wrote something, la, the one of the password in the diary. Then I took out, I think this is the one. La. Then quietly I just keyed in the, for the handphone while we were praying. Eh? And guess what? It worked. It worked. The password, the first time, I, I don't know why I brought this, uh, and then I just wrote it down, I forgot about it. And imagine how many, I think 20 over times I tried the password, and thank God it didn't get, what you call, jammed up, no? You got, uh, you are inaccessible, no? Sometimes they say you already passed the time, number of times. I thank God for His grace. Thank God He didn't let me down. I, I was, you know, I cannot do my work. I cannot do a lot of things if the phone is, is, is jammed. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's not accessible. That I didn't realize how important. Eh? Please remember to write down your password somewhere. Even though they say don't write, your memory might fail you. <laughs> write it, keep it secretly somewhere. Okay? That's my advice. Uh, praise God. God uh, helped me out uh, on this. And I'm really grateful. It's not the one of the things, so many things. But this one is really significant. Eh? Okay? Praise God. God is good. So I hope I encourage you to just hold on. Hold on to God. Don't give up. Okay? The help will be coming. Praise God. Let's uh, prepare ourselves to give unto the Lord our tithe and offering. As usual, we'll have our Friday prayer meeting on uh, Fridays at 9 p.m. That's the announcement. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love. We thank you that you are really gracious and merciful to all of us, God. And you love us. And this morning, God, we love you. And Lord, we want to obey you. And you have commanded the God that, that, you, that we ought to bring our tithe and offering, the one-tenth of our earning and the offerings to your house. It's not because you are desperate for this money. No, God. You search our hearts and you know that, Lord, that you want us to be right before you. For word says a lot, obedience is better than sacrifice. We want to obey you, O God, in this manner of giving. And this is an attitude, O God, that will bring forth great blessings to all of us. We do not want to be the cause for blocking all the blessings that you have for us. Help us a lot to discipline ourselves, to give unto you what belongs to you. We thank you for everyone, O Lord, for sacrificially giving unto your name, O God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. Bless each and every one. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. While the offering bag is going around, we have our uh, pastor ready.
Okay, and today's message again something very interesting. I saw an X floating. <laughs> okay, we seen the Python, we seen the date, and last week was. Anybody remember? Hygienize, okay, hygiene, and now we see an X floating. Okay, these are the messages that's coming. I believe there is a sequence of story for God to work in our life. Amen. And we can see that the, the first phrase is be transformed. That's the key. Be transformed. Enjoy listening to how the act started to float. We welcome Pastor Silas. Praise God. Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing today? Good. Okay, uh, let's pray for the children's ministry first before they leave. Okay, let's just stretch our hands. Father God, we want to commit the children into your mighty hands. Lord, even as, uh, as they go for the children's ministry, Lord, I pray, Father, that they will uh, grow stronger in you and and know more about your Father, Lord, even as uh, Brother Ben uh, imparts great knowledge and your word into their lives. Lord, I also pray that you will anoint Brother Ben and you will anoint his ministry and the kids in this evangelical church, your Father, they will come out and do great things, your Father, and they will shine for you, O God. Lord, I pray, O Father, that your Holy Spirit will lead this ministry. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Beautiful. Great. It's good to see all of you here today. We're always happy and glad and blessed to be in the house of the Lord. All feeling okay? Okay, all right. So despite we might have a challenging week, some, some of us might have a good week, not a very uh, okay, okay week. And you also heard the, the Elmina plane crash. We also heard that, right? So we should also keep uh, the family members in prayer. All right, so... Now going to my sermon for today, the sermon topic is, the iron will float. The iron will float. So you can see there's a contradiction because iron will never float. And the theme for this month is transformation. And what's the difference between change and transformation? And why is it a contradiction in my topic? Because iron will not float. And through God, it can float. And we'll look into that later. And, and why are we talking about a contradictory topic? It's because we are not talking about natural things. We are talking about supernatural things. In God, we don't expect natural, uh, natural things from God. Because humans can do that. When we go to God, we always ask for supernatural things. Because God is a supernatural God. Amen? So, and, and when we ask God for supernatural things, how does supernatural occur? When supernatural uh, event takes place, it means that the natural events, the, the law of nature, law of physics, will need to come to a pause. It needs to stop because they both don't work together. You understand what I'm saying? So, when laws of nature, laws of physics are in, in function, you can never have supernatural things taking place. All right? So when we expect supernatural things from God, we should also expect for natural events to stop. And that is called transformation. And what are the difference between change and transformation? Change, it means that when, for example, something that is not working, for example, your, your car tire, you don't transform your car tire. How many of you all, when, you're, when you've got a flat tire, you transform your tire? Or do we change the tire? We change the tire. We don't transform the tire. When someone asks, what happened to you? Why, why were you late for work? Uh, no, I had a flat tire, so I was transforming my, my car tire. We don't say that, right? It may sound very similar, change and transformation, but it's not. 
you don't transform your car tire, you change your car tire. Transformation is more into, it, it speaks more into your inner part, like something that is unseen, like hygienizing your temple. Clean are things that you can see. Hygienizing is dealing with things that you cannot see. Same thing. Change, you can see. Transformation, it's within us. And that is supernatural. And why is it supernatural? Because only God can transform life. We don't see human being transform, transforming anybody. Transformation is only possible through God. Okay, so let's look into the key scripture. One is Romans 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. That's our team. We'll read that and then we'll move into uh, Second Kings. So I will read Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So we have seen this uh, last week. What does conforming mean? You don't copy the pattern of the world, but you transform. You transform within you. You deal things within you through the renewal of your mind. Now let's look into 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 6. The whole passage will be from verse 1 to verse 7, but the key scripture will be 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 6. So let's read that first. I'll read. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place, so he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Okay? So he made the iron float. All right. So we can move to the first slide. Now we're going to talk about, we're going to take this passage where Elisha, Prophet Elisha is performing um, a very uh, different, very unique miracle and among his prophets, among his followers. And we can see that through verse 1 to verse 7, we're going to journey into some of the key words and, and I'm going to teach you all some Greek words today. Okay? You all excited to learn Greek? Okay, some of y'all, what use? I'm not going to use Greek. But we are going to say it together. And the reason why I'm, going to, I'm, I'm taking out some Greek words is so that we can know the meaning in depth and we will be able to understand the whole context in a, in a, in a bigger and a wider picture. Okay, so the first part, I will read verse 1. And the sons of the prophet say to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Okay, so the sons of prophets, the sons of prophet, sons in in Greek it means huios. You want to see, you want to try? Huios, huios. So, yeah, huios. You pronounce it in Bahasa, it will be like H U Y O S, huios. But that will be the Greek pronunciation. Okay, huios, huios. It means Children of Israel. Okay, these are the things that we can see in the meaning of the Bible when, when God say sons. What does it mean? Okay, children of Israel, sons of Abraham, and also a student who depends on a leader. That's whom we call huyos. Okay, so now the huyos is telling the prophet Elisha that this place is not enough for us and we need to get a bigger place. And what does it mean? Prophet Elisha's ministry is expanding and they need a bigger place to, for, for them to gather and for them to uh, have their schools of prophet. There's actually a background where some scholars actually suggest that there's actually a, a school of, uh, I can't remember the term, a school of, uh, it's a prophetic school that Elisha was running. Okay, so it has uh, expanded, so now they are looking for a bigger place. So, uh, to the next slide. So, now we know that so now the sons of prophets is telling Elisha that we need a bigger place now. So in the Old Testament, we also see that huyos is used for the Jews only. Okay, When they say huyos, it's only for the Jews. However, in New Testament, they have generalized it and they are using it for all Christians. So that means me and you, we are who knows? Not who knows. Me and you are who yos. 
Okay? Me and you are not who knows. Me and you are who yos. It means sons of Abraham. And we are also child of God. So know that you are child of God. Recognize your identity. So the, the pathway for transformation, the first step is for you to know your identity. All right? You can have your NRIC, our Malaysian MyCard, our Malaysian IC, and can you go to Singapore and ask them for their citizenship or you, can you ask them for, to enjoy their benefits of, of our residential benefit? Can we do that? But we, we, we also have an IC. We also have an identity card. Or you can or probably fly to the US or you can go anywhere around the globe. And you bring your Malaysian IC and you tell them that I have an identity card and I would like to get all the benefits that the residential here or the citizenship here will actually get. Will that work? It does not work. In the same way, when you don't have or me, when we don't have the real or we have not recognized the real identity through Christ, we cannot go to Jesus and ask him to transform our life. That is not fair. It's like going to another boss in another company and asking for salary because I've worked so much. From 9 to 5, they'll tell him, you know, my OT, I did like 12 to 12, you know, I've been working so hard. Uh, can you like, you know, just negotiate and just give me some. Will that work? You can never go to another boss. You served another boss, but you go to another boss and ask him for salary. So some of us are attached to some of the companies. Will that work? Can I come to your company and ask for salary from your boss? Or if you are the boss, can I come and ask you for salary? It's like, I've been working throughout the week. It's, it's been a hectic week, you know. Can you like bless me with some salary for this month? It doesn't work that way. So the first step for transformation in your life is for you to know that you are not who knows, you are who yours. You are who you are. You have to know your identity. You've got to know who you are in Christ. If you don't know who you are, you cannot step into the life of transformation. Your life can only be transformed so that you have to know who you are first. And that is why the people of uh, Jerusalem, they invited Jesus as their king. And then Jesus stepped into the temple and he, what did he do? He started overturning the tables. All right. Okay, now moving on to the second verse. Please let us go to Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So, uh, Prophet Elisha say, go. Now, verse 3, and one of them, okay, out of so many prophets, out of so many sons of prophets, prophets now one of them said, please consent to go with your servants. And Prophet Elijah said, I will go. Now, the verse 2, one of the prophet and one of the son of prophet, he realized that wherever that he wants to go, he needs to bring the man of? He needs to bring the man of? God. Even though they are going for their own duties. It's, they are not going for ministry. Right? They are not going for ministry. It's their own work. And still... One of the prophet was very clear. He knows that even though it is own work, he needs to bring the man of God. Same goes to us. Even though we don't need God just for ministry, we don't need God just when we are going to church, just because when we are going to prayer meeting or we are going to pray for somebody or just before the prayer, Lord, that's the only time we call God. No. In our daily life, and that is the second path of transformation in everything that we do, we call on to, we call on to God. Why do we call on to God? Because we are His huyos. We are His sons. We are His people. Okay? And then Elisha says, I will go. Now, this is a second Greek word I would like to teach you now. Prophet Elisha said, I will go. And I will go, it means porio mai. Porio mai. Okay? It's called porio mai. In Greek, it says porio mai. What does porio mai mean? Porio mai means, in English, it just says go. 
follow. But the real meaning in Greek, it says to lead or to carry over or to say to lead and to order someone. Not just to follow. Uh, this is to lead. So when Prophet Elisha said, I will go, I will pour your mind, it means that he says, fine, I will not just follow. And they are not just asking him to follow. They also want him to order what they are going to do. To lead them. All right. So even though it's a very personal task, it's a, they're just going to go and build a place for them. They don't need prophets to be there. Right? It's, it's a physical work. And yet, one of the prophets realized that even though it's a physical work, he needs, he needs God. And he called the prophet to pour your mind with them. And prophet said, I will pour your mind. It means, I will not just go, I will lead. And many times in our life, this is the next part of transformation, is that we can ask God to follow us. But a lot of times we don't allow God to lead us. And now that's the problem. We will say, Lord, I'm going to work. Please follow me. Lord, I'm going here. Please follow me. But we hardly ask God to lead us. And you know what is the difference between follow and lead? Follow, it means you are the leader. God is just going to follow you. You are leading. If you ask God to pour your mind, your life, which is He leads and you follow, he gives you the order. He gives you the instruction. And what do we do? We become the follower. But it's our duty. It's our responsibility. It's our personal matter that we're going to do. But still, we ask God to lead. And let us not take it to the extreme. And when we want to go to the club, to drink, to smoke, and you say, Lord, I want you to lead. <laughs> okay? It's going to be a wild party and I want you to lead. We have been targeting for probably six bottles, seven bottles. We don't know how we're going to do it, Lord. I don't want you to just follow. I want you to pour your mind. I want you to lead. Prepare that place for us so that we can have a beautiful part. No. Okay? A lot of times we need to keep Christians aware so that they don't misuse, they don't misuse God and they don't misuse uh, the Greek word that I'm telling, I'm teaching, okay? So, poriomai, it means that asking God to lead you. Alright? So, when we ask God to lead us, we don't, when something happens, we don't say, Lord, wait. Let me handle this. If we are leading, if, we, if Jesus is following us, if the Holy Spirit is only following, if it's not leading, when there's a problem, when there's a problem, the Holy Spirit will try to give you an idea, will try to uh, convict you and say, like what Uncle Devon shared. Like when he, when he came about the prayer meeting, the Holy Spirit just convicted him and, and said, the green book. And, and he knew. Well, is that the green book that I'm looking at? Is that a green book? Okay, beautiful book. Okay. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit say, the green book. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, pour your mind, you, you know what will happen? When the Holy Spirit say, Take the green book, you would say, cannot be. Lah. No, stop. You will stop. You will stop the work of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we only ask the Holy Spirit to follow us, but not to lead us. And when we face challenges, pain and suffering in life, the God will always try to give you a solution. But we will be like, oh, 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 oh. I got this. I've handled this before, Lord. You don't know this guy. I know him very well. I know him for the past 15 years. You cannot handle this fella. I can handle this guy. You wait and watch. You see what I do. We go, we fail, we come back. Then we tell Lord, the next time I want you to, I want you to lead me, lah, please. Okay, I got this this time. Then the next time, we also say, Lord, I want you to lead me. And inside us, it's not being transformed yet. Inside us, we ask God, Lord, you follow me. And when God follow you, and when He tries to lead you, you'll be like, when the next challenge comes, it's like, Lord, I think this is very familiar. No problem. You can rest here. I'll wait here for five minutes, I'll be back. I'm going to make this quick. We go, we try to settle, we get hurt, or we get into a bigger mess, we come back and say, Lord, I think, I feel like this it just didn't work. I don't know how, every time I've been doing this method, huh, it worked, you know. You know, that's how we say, right? I don't know how, every time I do this, it works, but this time just didn't work. It's because we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead. And every time when He wants to lead, we say, wait. You hold on to the Holy Spirit. And now, this prophet, 
He knows that. He needs to bring the man of God and he says, Poriomai, he, he asked him to lead. And Prophet Elisha also acknowledged what they request and he said, fine, I will lead. And that's what Prophet said. Now, let's go to the next verse. So he went with them and when they came to the Jordan, they, they cut down trees. Verse 5, it's a very important verse, verse 5 and 6. Now verse 5 it says, But as one was cutting down a tree, an iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. In verse 5, we see that his axe, the iron, that iron fell off from his axe. Now, iron, the, it cannot be an axe if you don't have that iron head. Correct? So it's important. So now, fell off. The next slide would be for fell off. What does fell off mean? The next Greek word would be ekpipto. Fell off, it means ek. What does ekpipto mean? Ekpipto, in the translation that we read, it says, fell off. Bahasa, we say, jato, fell. It was very plain. But if you were to dive in the Greek word, it means that to fall from its original position. It was supposed to be at a position, but it fell from its original position. Next one is to lose it and to fall down. And an iron will not just slip and fall. It could have been loose where sometimes we don't realize it, right? Sometimes we think that it's actually okay. But when it gets very intensive, then it just fell off. And then we realize that, oh, probably it wasn't tight enough. So, in life, you don't lose something easily. We would have lost its grip and we don't realize it. And transformation helps us to get a fresh grip in God, helps us to get a fresh grip in His Word and His presence. Because you will not lose something out of a sudden. Usually, it's already been loose for quite some time. And we don't realize it. And now, it says that, there's also another meaning for ekpipto, it means to fall powerless. It has lost its power. Some areas of our life may have lost its power, authority, or uh, favor, and it just fell off from its original position where it's supposed to be, and that is called ekpipto. Falling to the ground by losing its strength. Powerless means there's no strength, and has lost its ability to sustain or remain. So this is what's happening here. And iron is actually important. And some parts in our life, when transformation takes place, some areas of our life might be loose. And we don't, if you don't realize it, and if you don't address it, and if you don't get a fresh grip in God, it will lose its strength and it will fall from its original position. And that is called ek. Not just falling off, but it's falling because it has no power. It has no grip. The iron axe fell off because it does not have a strong grip on that handle. And that's why it fell off. And in our life, there are some important, as I said, without that, without that iron, it's not an axe. So there are some areas or some part in our life that is so important that if we don't check on them, they will lose its grip and fall off. It will not just fall off just out of a sudden. It will lose its grip slowly and slowly and slowly. And out of a sudden, and we don't notice it, when it gets intensive, it just fell off. It falls away. It becomes ekpipto. It becomes powerless. It loses its strength, its ability to sustain, and it falls off. And the next thing that happens here is that that prophet, that man, he immediately, he cried out. 
he immediately he cried out. What did he say? He cried out and he said, it was borrowed. And now here's, here's the next one. In verse 5, cried out, it means boa-o. Boa-o. Okay, a boa-o. It's B-O-A space and O. So you've got a boa and O. In our translation, it says cry. But in a Greek meaning, if you were to jump deeper, it says to raise a cry in pain. So not just crying out, but as you cry out, it's pain. It's so much of pain. And the next part is to cry with a high and strong voice. You can cry softly. You can cry without people knowing. You can just have tears. But this boa-o, it's not a silent cry. It's crying out loud. Okay, It's crying out loud. And it says, you cry out with a high and strong voice. Have you heard or have we ever experienced crying or seen people crying with a high voice and strong voice? It, what does it mean? It means that so much of pain, right? If, it's not, if it doesn't hurt you so much, some people just, you know, just have tears, it's okay, you still can overcome it. But some pain are unacceptable. It's too much to contain. And what happened is that he gets so desperate, he wanted to let it out. When I read it, I felt like it was just an X. If it was me, even if I borrowed, and if it's an X, I wouldn't cry out that bad. I would be like, oh, come on. Then I'll go to another, can I borrow yours? Mine just fell in. So I'll just have to look for a way to replace it. That's what we do in reality. But that's a beautiful thing about this son of prophet. The huyos here, it's responsible. Even though it could be a very small, a little thing that you have borrowed, this is called transformation. When transformation begins to take place, you'll be even responsible for small, little things that people may feel like, no, like, don't have to be, it's okay, la, no problem, it's a small thing. Have you, people have said, right, no, la, it's okay, don't worry, it's a small thing, don't worry about it, you can get it done. But we will cry out so loud because we are so responsible for what, for what we have done. And that is called boa'o. And and, and, and sometimes in our life, we have to get desperate for help. And when something bad happens in our life, and that's very important, when something bad happens in our life, we need to get desperate for the help of God. And we can only get desperate for the help of God if you have done the first step correctly, is to ask God to lead us. Because we know that He is leading. If God is just following, we will tend to solve those problems in our own strength. Right? So when we have done all this part right, and when there's trouble, when there's pain, when there's suffering, when there's challenges, the first thing we do is that we get desperate for help. And, and for example, let's say we, we fell into an ocean. Okay? We have watched Titanic. Right? We have all watched Titanic. That's like an entry level of an English movie or Hollywood movie. Okay? If you have not watched Titanic, you're missing something in life. Please go and watch. Okay? That's like a must-watch English movie. Okay? All right. So we have all watched Titanic. And, and towards the ending part, we know how people were struggling. They were like afraid of dying. Let's say we are there. We are also part of them and it's, it's a lesser crowd. Okay? Not a big crowd. Now, Will we just relax and enjoy the wave of the ocean? Or would we desperately cry and ask for help? If you are enjoying the wave of the ocean in the middle of the ocean, huh? I'm talking about the middle of the ocean where the, the water is dark blue. It is almost black in color. Okay, I'm not talking about the light blue where you can see through. No, this is the middle of the ocean. Okay, and when you when you are when you are uh, placed in such position, nobody enjoys the wave. We don't be like, oh, this is a beautiful wave. Check out the wave. There's nothing around me. Will I even survive? Not sure. But the wave is so strong. No. 
I mean, if you are doing that, then I think you're not in the right state of mind. Either you're drunk or you're mentally ill. Okay? The moment you enjoy waves in life, you must be drunk or you're mentally ill. Okay? I'm talking about no, what normal people will do. Okay? All right? But what will we do? A normal person, what will we do? We will cry out loud. Boa'o. Cry out loud with strong and high voice because we know people will not be able to hear us from a certain distance. It's going to be so hard. Right? Even though we have got so much of training screaming at home, the moment you are in the middle of the ocean, it's a whole different challenge already. Okay? It's not easy. And you got a boa'o when you are in a desperate situation. The same thing. When you are in a bad situation in life, you don't enjoy or you don't just... Have you seen people say, it's okay lah, just go with the flow lah. That's a huge problem. They'll be like, whatever happens, it happens. We just flow. It's okay, no problem. We just enjoy it. If you do it with God, it's a very different interpretation. If you say, bad thing happen. It's okay lah, just leave it lah, just go on it lah. Whatever it is, I've seen worse than this lah. It's okay, just go on. You don't have hope. You don't have meaning in life. And when we have Christ in us, we will desperately ask for God's help and also we know that we have hope in God. And that is how transformation works. When you're transformed, you will ask, you will be, you'll desperately ask for help. And where did he go? Where did the prophet go? He did not go to his friends. He did not go to his, uh, the other prophets and ask for help. He went to the... Where did he go? The next part, the next word is, in English is master, right? He went to his master. In Greek, it says kurios. 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 What does kurios mean? Kurios, it means someone who is in a position who can, who can decide. So, who is higher than you. Remember? When you ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, to lead you, He leads. You be the follower. He leads. He be the leader. So now when He is the leader, you will go to the Holy Spirit. You will go to God. And what happens when you go to God? We know that He has the power to decide. He has the power to decide. And some of the meanings here in, in Greek, it says someone who has power to decide, a master, Lord, who is in control the sovereign, or they use this word kurios for a prince or a chief or for a head. The Roman Empire back in the days, the head, they said kurios. It means it's a person or the term being used to honor that person in respect and in reverence. Not just an ordinary master, not an ordinary tuan, bossa. This is a person who we know we respect him so much and in reverence. And this kurios in the Bible is also used for God, the Messiah. And in some of the scriptures we can see, this title is also given to God. And the guy who dropped it, he went to Elisha and not his friends to sort things on himself. Because in life when we get into trouble, we can never solve our own problem. We have to understand that first. When you face challenges in life, it can be your own thing. It can be your personal, it can be your own mistake that you have done. It could be probably, it probably would be his mistake. Or I don't know if it's a mistake. Maybe you can say maybe he did not check the grip of the iron hate properly before he started using it. It does not matter. Sometimes it can be your own mistake that you have done. Sometimes you have done something really, really bad that you have brought in so much of pain to yourself or the people around you, your family or your relationship, can be anything. There's so much of things that you've done. Maybe it's caused by you. And sometimes you feel a bit guilty to go to God. You feel like, Lord, um, I've did it myself. I think I will take responsibility. It's good to take responsibility, but it's more important to ask God for help. And transformation helps you to go to your master. It does not bring you to your friends. Because remember, the first part, they've already acknowledged for Elisha to lead them. So when you lead, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, when something happens, you will go to your leader. You will not go to your friends. 
if your friend, if social media, if people around you, or your neighbors, or, or anybody else, your relatives, your brother is your leader, if anything happens, you will just go to them. But if you have God as your leader, you will always, even for a personal problem, even for a mistake that you have done personally, you will still go to God. And that is a life of transformation. And we have to know that the right person in our life will ensure right things to happen. When you have wrong people in your life, when you have wrong friends, bad things, bad decisions, and wrong things will begin to happen. We don't just hear it in the Bible. We also hear it outside. When people say, always surround yourself with people who are successful or more successful than you so that you always have a direction. All right? Would you hang out with people who have no job or maybe they have jobless for 20, 30 years and they just don't feel like working at all? People are just roaming around, nothing, taking the motorbike, you know, wah, wah, wah. And it just, and, and they are your friends. Would you, do you think you're hating success? When you, when you hang out with people like that, do you, do you no, you're not hating success. You're hating the hospital soon. That's why you're hating. So people that you, you're surrounded with. So now this prophet knew that he had his master with him. He did not go anywhere. So in our life, when you have the right person, which is God in your life, even though there's a problem, right things will take place. And that is very important. And not everyone can help in every part of our life. Transformation is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you need the Holy Spirit to help you. Next. Now the prophet, now prophet Elisha, now prophet Elisha asked him. So the man of God said, where did it fall? Now this is very important. The prophet, now he cried out. He said, Lord, this is, I borrowed. I need to give it back. So much of pain, so much of expression. Now the prophet asked, so now tell me, where did it fall? Now, if we need transformation in our life, and God asks us, where do you need transformation? We cannot give him an uncertain answer. What if this prophet would have said, I think it fell here. I'm not sure because... When I pulled it up, I think maybe, I don't, I'm not sure. Lah. Maybe here or maybe back or maybe it didn't fall. I'm still not sure. We find together. Lah. We find together. Do you think miracles can take place that way? No. You've got to know where you need transformation. And you need Holy Spirit to help you spot where you need to be transformed. And now if God asks you, for example, Jesus is asking you, Okay, what do you want in life? Like, you know, like literally, Jesus is asking you. Okay, now tell me one thing. What do you want in life? We cannot take our own time like how we sit in the mama and ask, Abang, ada apa? Ah? What do you want in life? Jesus, wait. Ah. Let me see. Mm, this one God, that one God. This one I can get myself. This one can. This one, my cousin said next week he's going to get it for me. I think, wait. Ah. Uh, you ask, you ask my friend first. We do that in Mama Shop, right? Abang, sekejap ayo, cannot decide lah. Tapi lah bawa ayo dulu, abawa ayo dulu. We decide on the food. You cannot do that with God. When God asks you what you want in life, you got to know what you want in life. We can't be negotiating with God and say, Lord, which one do you think is the best for me? Eh? No. If you need transformation in your life, if you want your relationship to be restored, if you want your position, your work, your business, your family, whatever need to be restored, you got a spot. When God asks you, where did it fall? And where did your precious iron fell? You have to know where it fell. You got to do your work. You don't depend everything on God. Lah. I know we have to be dependent on God, but don't take it to the extreme until like God, where it fell, lah, Lord, you know everything. You tell me where it fell, you pick it up for me. No, it doesn't work that way. When the Lord asks you, what do you need? You have to know what you need. And when the prophet Elisha asked him, where did it fall? And you know what does fall means? In Greek, it, it means pipto. P-I-P-T. 
P-I-P-T-O. Pipto. And Pipto, it means to fall, to lose something in grief, to lose something in pain, and, and, and lose something like uh, cast down from a state of prosperity. Maybe it was doing good. The ex was doing good. It was doing great. And that's the reason why he borrowed. If it's a broken one, he wouldn't have borrowed. It was a good condition. It was working perfectly fine. And it fell. So he have lost something in pain. Okay? He have lost something in pain. It means pipto. Something that he have lost in our life in pain. Or, or some part of our life that had been condemned by, by many people. Or maybe our behavior, maybe our life, maybe our work. Can be anything that people just say, ah, this is just bad. Lah. You, you like this, lah. you that one, lah. you this. Lah. Have you seen people like this keep condemning, keep condemning? They, they never speak positive words. Man. Have you seen people like that? Even though you give them a very beautiful thing, they will always come up with one tip. But I think this could have made it better. Have you seen people like that? I have seen. A lot of times. <laughs> okay? Then you always be like, oh, yo, you cannot satisfy this person. Lah. Then the person will say, okay, you know what? I just want this in a circle shape. Ah, circle. Then you give them a beautiful circle. Okay, this very color, all beautiful thing. You pass it. This is exactly what you need. It's good, but blue is not my favorite color. You don't know. Ah. Now, we become, now we get into the trap. So you don't know my favorite color. So you don't know what I want. You're like, I, I was in a so positive, I wanted to make you happy. And now I'm in trouble. You're being questioned. You're like in the court now. You have to answer so many questions. Now, you have lost something in pain. And that's what, and that's what uh, Elisha is asking. Where did it fall? To lose, to lose our authority, power, removed by death, or something that we have tried, but it has failed. Now, this man, and he showed him the place. He knew where it fell. He knew who was with him, and he went to the master, and when the master asked him where it fell, he knew where it fell. He told him, it fell here. He, it was a direct answer. He said, so he showed him the place. So the cut off, so he cut off a stick. Who? Prophet Elisha. He cut off a stick, he threw it in there. He did not just cut and randomly throw. Why? You need to be specific in life. If you want your life to be transformed in some areas of our life, we need to be specific. So that when God can also perform His supernatural uh, activity or supernatural miracle breakthrough or prosperity or blessing specifically in your life. When God is asking you, what car do you like? Can you tell me? I'm going to bless you a car. MPV also can, SUV also can, black color can, small can, B can, everything can. Just give me anything you want. If God were to give you a scrap car, would you be happy? You ask for anything, what? I give you a scrap car. Lah. It can bring you from destination A to destination B. It wasn't specific. So it's important to be specific when we deal with God. Same goes to transformation also. When you want your life or any area of life that need to be transformed, you need to be specific on what you ask God. And when he threw that stick in there, now, he made the iron float. And as he threw, the iron began to float. Iron can never float. Right? And this is supernatural. And when you know how to deal with God, when you bring God everywhere you go, not to follow, but to lead you. And when you face problem, when you bring it to God first, not last, huh? not going to God until like, Lord, I've tried everywhere. My only option is you now. That's not how it is. The first option is God. And you bring it to Him, He's going to ask you, where do you need transformation? He's, and He will ask you just one thing, where, what, or why? Just give Him the answer, Lord, here. Lord, this place. Lord, this relationship. Lord, this part of my life. Lord, this relationship. And what, and what will God do? He will immediately 
perform a supernatural things in our life. And whatever things that is sunk really, really deep that we can't even see, there's no hope. When the iron goes down, it doesn't float in the middle. It goes all the way to the ground. It falls all the way down. And what happens? And when God performs a miracle, supernatural things will begin to take place. And that is transformation. And we will see iron floating in our life. We can see iron begin to float. Things that we think will never happen, it will begin to happen. Things that you think is impossible, God will bring it into possibilities. Things that you think that are dead a long time ago, I'm never even thinking about it. It's like 10 years ago. It's it's too long already. It's okay. What will happen? It will begin to float and it will come to you. And the last part is that when it floats, therefore he said, pick it up yourself. Elisha did not. It's already floating. He did not take it on himself. What did he do? He asked him to go and get it. God is doing his supernatural things in our life, not just a demo, not just a performance or a show. He wants us to participate in his miracle. And when you get down and get the axe, you also participate in his supernatural miracle. And that is what God wants us to do. So transformation is not entirely God. Only God can do but you also have your roles to play. You also have your thing to do. And when you do that right, God will, will enable the irons in our life to float. And that is, that is why I picked this uh, topic. The iron will float. It will not just float by itself. It, it, it takes some procedures. Okay, so when we, we're going to commit this time to the Lord and we're going to ask God to lead wherever that we go, to lead what we do in life. And when we see Him as our master, and when problem comes, when we go to God, He will help us to restore, to transform our life. Areas that we feel that it's not going to change, sickness, disease, bondage, curse, there are some things that we feel that it's gone and it is gone. No, it's not gone. It can float. If you bring it to God, it can float. And all you have to do is bring it to God. And that is transformation. God can transform our habits. He can transform our life. He can transform relationship, work, business, anything that we do. We can see the transformation our God transformation of God in that particular area of our life if we are specific. Beautiful? Let's just commit this time to the Lord. And we'll ask God to transform to transform our life and we'll ask we'll acknowledge that Lord we are your sons and daughters. We know who we are. We know what's our identity. And we know that when we have lost grip, Lord, we want to renew. We want to to have a fresh grip in your word. We want to have a fresh grip in worship, in his presence, in everything that we do. Lord, we say that, Lord, we want to restore and transform and we need a fresh grip in you. And when we face pain and suffering, We will not go anywhere else, but we will go to the Master because we know that God is leading us. We will go back to the work of the Holy Spirit because we know that Holy Spirit is leading us. And when we submit to Him, transformation will take place. Whatever that is sunk in our life will begin to float. And that is the evidence of transformation. Whatever that is dead will come back to life. Whatever that is not moving will begin to move. Like in the book of Matthew, it says, the blind and the lame came to Jesus. The same thing in our life. Irons will float, blind will see, and the lame will walk. If we commit everything that we do to the Lord. Lord we want to thank you for 
your presence. We want to thank you for your word. Lord, I pray, Father, that those who are uh, attending it on site and also those who are watching us online, Lord, we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will help all of us to, to walk through this path of transformation so that we'll be able to see irons floating in our life. Impossible things turning into possibilities. Lord, we will see blind seeing. Lord, oh God, I pray, oh Father, that this week will be a week of transformation in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will see transformation in family, in work, in whatever that we ask for. Lord, we pray, oh Father, that we, the members of Evangel Church, and those who are watching it online, they will also partake in this, in this event of transformation. That this church will be a hub of transformation, a transformation hub. And anybody who involves in this fellowship, they will experience transformation in their life, oh God. They want to thank you for your grace. They want to thank you for your mercy. We want to thank you for your word. Lord, I pray, oh Father, that this week, oh Father, will experience beautiful favor and great blessings in this, uh, in this week, oh Father. We want to thank you in Jesus' name. We ask and we pray. Amen. Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Let's stand on our feet. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. And thank you for those who are watching us online. You want to uh, thank you for watching us as well. So we'll see all of you all next week. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.